Tay and click on entertainment, then NTAI. You can also download the iOS or Android app on your mobile devices to watch NTA International on the go anywhere in the world. NTA International, your window to the world. When a labor of mine, we genot a latching the ship. It took Kuma, Babala Baron, one and Jerida, Shinny, and him, Bala Baron, Dike, a bunch of eaters, she didn't have on the news tonight, President Buhari plays host to Chadian counterpart Idris Debbie Itno and the executives of Microsoft Corporation. Sultan of Sokoto announces the sighting of the moon for the commencement of the Ramadan fast. Appeal Court opposed judgment on Governor Umay's defection from PDP to APC. Also tonight, National Council for Women's Societies Society gets new leadership. Good evening and many thanks for joining us. This is NTA Network News. We are live in Abuja. I am Jummai Yusuf. Michael Olale is joining us from Lagos and Agatha Aware Ojo will be in our Benin studio. You're welcome. You can follow these news broadcasts live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and all our social media platforms displayed on the screen. Now, President Mohamedou Buhari this Friday granted audience to the Chadian leader, Mohamed Idris Dabi Itno, on a one-day private visit. This is coming barely 24 hours after playing host to his Nigerian counterpart, Mohamed Bazoum. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports. President Mohamed Idris Dabi Itno, who is the chairman of the Transitional Military Council of Chad, is visiting Nigeria for the second time since coming to power about 11 months ago. During his first visit, President Muhammad Ednu explained to President Muhammad Buhari circumstances surrounding his coming to power, thanks Nigeria for the show of solidarity when his father died in the battlefield and promised sustained collaboration and cooperation between his country and Nigeria in the battle against terrorism and insurgency. No reason was given this time for the Chadian leader's visit by the presidency. The high-level one-on-one engagement between President Muhammad Buhari and his guests was held behind closed doors. Details of their discussions that lasted about one hour were not disclosed. On coming to power, the Chadian leader promised a return to democracy in 18 months and the readiness of his country to be guided by President Buhari and indeed Nigeria in the journey to constitutional order. In the meantime, the Nigerian leader also granted audience to the ambassador of the state of Qatar to Nigeria, Dr. Ali bin Ghanim al Hajri. The envoy delivered to President Muhammad Buhari a special message from the Qatari monarch Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad al Thani. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. The federal government says it is willing to partner with Microsoft towards making Nigeria the epicenter for innovative emerging technologies on the continent, describing it as critical to digital transformation in the fourth industrial revolution. President Mahmoudou Buhari stated this while exchanging views with the president of the multinational technology corporation, Brad Smith. He expressed the country's appreciation to the company for establishing its first engineering hub in Africa, valued at $200 million. State House correspondent Adam Osambo has the details. Visiting Nigeria for the first time, the Microsoft Corporation President Brad Smith is here to assess the performance of the company's various initiatives in the country as well as discuss future plans in support of the nation's economic growth. Microsoft believes in the future of Nigeria, 
But I think what's really important is the recent inauguration of the Africa Development Center in Lagos. We already have 110 people working as software developers, creating products for Microsoft. And we expect that number to grow by 300 by next year to help build a technology industry that continues to grow each and every year here. Microsoft is also seeking to put in place a multifaceted digital infrastructure for the country, expand its investments with the possibility of establishing the company's data centers and train 5 million people in the coming years. We would not have pursued these without the forward-looking policies that you have pursued. And I'm glad that he came into Nigeria during this current administration to appreciate what government has been doing in providing the enabling environment for tech giants to come and do business in the country. President Muhammad Buhari said his administration places a lot of value and emphasis on the development of the nation's digital economy and is therefore pleased to collaborate with technology giants like Microsoft. It's the largest economy and most populous country in Africa. Nigeria is positioned to play a strategic role in the global technology ecosystem. And we seek the right partnerships to harness the potentials of these opportunities. We have the potential of becoming your most lucrative market in Africa. As such, we urge you to continue to support the development of our digital economy. The emphasis on the development of digital economy, he explained, has already positioned the sector as a prominent factor in Nigeria's economy, contributing significantly in support of the country's exit from the COVID-19 triggered recession. We are keen to build on the momentum as we continue to implement our national digital economy policy and strategy, along with other related policies. Our administration has shown great commitment in providing a conducive environment for investors. And our massive jump in the global ease of doing business ranking is a proof that our efforts are yielding positive results. President Buhari used the opportunity to commend the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Professor Isa Ali Ibrahim Pantemi, for showing great commitment to his assignment, directing him to keep the government fully informed of all ongoing and proposed activities supporting the growth of Nigeria's digital economy. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Still so with the presidency, President Mohamedou Buhari has approved the reappointment of the entire executive management of the Nigeria Export Import Nagzim Bank. The reappointment follows the fact that the members of the current management of the bank were appointed on 10th April 2017 and their first five-year term is due to expire on 9th April 2022, as contained in a statement by Yunus Atanko Abdullahi, Special Advisor, Media and Communications to the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning. Those involved in the reappointment are Abba Bello, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Bello Bala Bello, Executive Director, Corporate Services, and Stella Okotete, Executive Director, Business Development. The statement asks that their performance was appraised as their tenure drew to an end and were found to have performed well as exemplified by key achievements. President of the Senate, Ahmed Ibrahim Lowen, has applauded the chairman of the defunct APC Caretaker Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee and Yobe State Governor May Malabuni for rescuing, repositioning and successful conduct of the party's national convention that ushered in the new APC National Working Committee. The nation's chief lawmaker gave the commendation at a grand reception organized in Damatru to honor Buni's 18-month stewardship of the ruling party. Yunus Suleiman reports. May Malabuni on arrival was received by members of the Yobe State Executive Council, APC stalwarts and stakeholders amid a rousing homecoming at Warsala, a boundary community between Yobe and Borno states. At the August 27th stadium, Damatru, it was also a crowd of APC chieftains and loyalists from the northeast region. 
who converged on the arena to show their solidarity to the governor after successfully completing his national assignment. President of the Senator Ahmad Lawan, who saluted the courage, patriotism and resilience of Governor Buni for taking the ruling APC to an enviable position, also described him as an embodiment of reconciliation, unity and proven integrity. Your Excellency, you have made us proud. We are proud, Yobians, because you have done everything and anything expected of you as the chairman of the caretaker and convention planning committee. Other speakers at the Grand Rally lauded Governor Bonnie's achievements, which include attracting big weeks from the opposition parties into the APC, reconciling agreed members, and above all, placing the ruling APC on a solid foundation of winning future elections. Featured at the event was the presentation of APC flags to some defectors, notable among them is the former PDP senator representing Yobe South, Mohammed Hassan. To other news now, the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation for CAC at the seminar held in Abuja has redefined the relationship between the benefiting entities. However, Nigeria is still pushing for more cooperation in the areas of housing, energy, education and security. Elizabeth Omori reports. This relationship dates back 1971 and both have continued to enjoy smooth and steady development. Maintenance of this harmonious cooperation is a reason for this meeting to close the gaps in infrastructural deficits. Uphold non-interference in international affairs and support multilateralism and democracy in the international relations to promote our win-win cooperation. Essentially, we have looked at... Uh the ways our relationships have been. So the China-Nigeria relations, we want, like say, to go beyond what this government to government. And now also to people to people, there are advantages out there that an ordinary Nigerian is supposed to take. And then in the areas of trade and investment, people need to know what to do exactly. As a member of the Belt and Road Initiative, Nigeria discussions say must scale up industrialization process that will facilitate investments in housing, energy, education, and security. The Chinese way is to adopt an independent way, the internationalization of the renminbi. So if in the interest of Africa, Nigeria, and China, we're going to engage in financial cooperation, that will actually boost our cooperative independence in economic cooperation. Nigeria is one of the fastest growing economies in sub-Saharan Africa. Panelists suggest should strengthen her sport base for inclusive growth. Elizabeth Omori, NT News. The federal government is set to deploy modern technology and professional skills in the fight against illicit drug trafficking in Nigeria. This was part of the fallout from the recent federal executive council meeting. Abdul Malik Hassan reports. Trafficking remains an organized crime that is being frowned at in many countries the world over. In 2021, the federal government employed the services of a new sheriff to chair the anti-illicit drug agency in Nigeria, whose impact is now felt and revealing the hidden drug business. More than 12,000 drug traffickers with an estimated 3.4 million kilograms of hard drugs seized from January to December 2021. Now, at the Federal Executive Council meeting held Wednesday, 30th of March 2022, the Council approved over 1 billion naira to procure sophisticated equipment to detect drug barons. For the purpose of enhancing the capacity of the NDLEA in exterminating illicit drugs trafficking cells and consumption, the federal government has approved the supply of eye scanning lie detector that have the capacity to detect whether you are indeed speaking the truth or indeed you are lying in the course of the investigation. And the second memo seeks approval of the Council for the supply of digital night vision goggles. This is equally additional technological device that is intended to support the night operations 
of NDLEA. Well, this development may be seen as a game changer on the drug war, but experts say there is still much to be done. These are investigative equipments, and in the sequence of activities in a security setup, investigation is like after you have made arrests. Not in all cases, but in most cases. So I think, to me, they need to enhance information gathering. They need things like mobility. If there is something, how fast can they respond? They need weapons. Because it's going to save NDLA a precious time in uh, having to uh, investigate, uh, having to spend so much time on investigating uh, matters that they are not likely to win in court. Much is now expected from the anti-illicit drug agency. Hopefully, more success will be recorded. Abdul Malik Hassan, NTA News. As Nigeria grapples to overcome recent terrorist train attack and other acts of violence perpetrated by avowed enemies of the nation, the governing All Progressives Congress has cautioned the opposition People's Democratic Party to avoid comments that are capable of causing further grief. In a statement, National Publicity Secretary of APC Felix Morka said the APC-led government is not complicit in the heinous train attack in which some innocent Nigerians lost their lives, several injured and others unaccounted for. However, this statement adds that it is insensitive for the PDP to seek to politicize a terrorist attack that cut short the lives of people for its own interest. The APC reminded the opposition that the president's swift response to the tragic event as he met with security chiefs and directed the immediate conclusion of all processes for implementation of the integrated security surveillance and monitoring system solution for Abuja Kaduna rail line as well as the extension of the ISSM solution to cover the Lagos Ibadan rail line is timely. APC, the statement added, remains committed to working with relevant authorities in bringing the perpetrators of these despicable acts to justice. Let's take some messages. We'll be back shortly. Do stay. Get data unlimited to experience dance unlimited on Glow TV. Watch Battle of the Year and other amazing TV content with Glow TV data plans that will make you dance. Dial star 777 hash to choose the right data plan for you. Thank you for the rejections that taught me to keep striving. Thank you for the long hours that taught me discipline. Thank you for the knockdowns that taught me to bounce back. And for the unexpected victories that taught me to never give up. Thank you for making me who I am. Dear friend, how are you? Hmm, I can smell the goodness of Easter around you. But wait a minute, do you know you can enjoy Easter in luxurious comfort like never before? Because this Easter, Bad Maids Furniture invites you to discover new levels of comfort with furniture that brings life to your home. Seriously, now is your last chance to have a memorable Easter and beyond. From 21st March to 20th April 2022, get furniture you love at unbelievable low prices with free gifts in our showrooms. Hurry now before others choose the finest units you want. In my family, everybody wants more. Knowledge. Okay. I just want more of anything that is good for my family. That is why I use Tasty Tom and Rich Tomato Mix. It's thick and gives my meals an appealing red color. It helps me cook delicious meals. And what's more, it's enriched with vitamins and fiber that are good for the body. What more could a mother want? Please give me more. It's time you try Tasty Tom Enriched Tomato Mix because it's enriched with vitamins and fiber. Tasty Tom, for tasty meals good for you. Available in convenient sachets that are easy to open and easy to store. We don't carry out in the hospital. I don't see why we carry in the hospital because of ordinary fever now. Ordinary fever. 
Picking when body they hot like that. Now cloth now so kiss what I take crop her body. She don't they play even as I come out. If now malaria now they worry that picking. By now you don't know the thing for don't worth part. Yeah. Ah, wait. Love my do that one. I bet make a quick call mechanic. Carry cloth and water. Yes. For generator. You use cloth and water clean our picking body. Go use that same pattern. For the generator, make we see as it go work. Sense, mama. <laughs> I receive sense, so. See, I go do I'm correct now. Make you carry this phone and help me call the engineer. Make a car up and shut the hospital. <laughs> if people catch you and you no go to this time, sharp, sharp. If it's serious, but as you do, especially for picking them whenever reach five years. Two tests. If na malaria, finish your medicine. If no be malaria, go. Your health worker will tell you what to do. Now, Federal Ministry of Health and American people, them bring on this message. <laughs> Clarion Break It Up Plus Plus is here. Existing Glow customers will get 400% bonus on every recharge and 100 MB data bonus on first recharge of the month. New Glow customers will get 1,000 Nara welcome bonus. To activate, buy a new Glow scene today or dial star 777 hash for existing Glow customers. Yeah, welcome back. We are now going to Sokoto, the seat of the Caliphate, where the Sultan of Sokoto, Sa'ad Abu Bakr II, will be announcing the commencement of the Ramadan fast. And we duly approved and admitted the messages sent to us to confirm the sighting of the new moon to bring in the holy month of Ramadan, 1443. Therefore, today, 1st April 2022, marks the end of Shaban 1443. And tomorrow, inshallah, we will start fasting in accordance with the Sharia. Arrival reports we got from so many states, including Sokoto, Borno, Yobe, Zamfara. Asina, Plato, Kaduna, and Kano all confirmed sighting of the new moon. Consequently, we call on all Muslims to start the fasting in this holy month of Ramadan tomorrow, inshallah. Let us seize this opportunity once more, call on Muslims across the country to redouble efforts in praying to Almighty Allah to bring peace and stability to this great country, Nigeria. Let us redouble and dedicate our efforts in worshiping Almighty Allah, Almighty Allah in this holy month so that we can reap the full benefits of the holy month, which will lead to our salvation and consequently into al Jannah dose inshallah we call on all muslims once more to walk towards peaceful coexistence with everybody in this great country pray for our leaders political leaders religious leaders and all leaders at all levels so that almighty allah will give them the strength and the wisdom to steer the affairs of our great country, Nigeria, to the promised land in peace, stability, and full development so that we can all be happy and continue to worship Almighty Allah, why not Allah? I'd like to use this opportunity once more to call on our leaders to double their efforts to bring the insecurity in this country to an end as soon as possible. Also, we call on our leaders to fear Almighty Allah in the discharge of their duties to the people Almighty Allah placed on their shoulders. I would like to call on all citizens of this great country to continue to live in peace with one another, respect one another, so that Nigeria will be a much, much better country than it is now. 
We thank Almighty Allah for making us part of his creation to witness the end of this Shaban and we pray to him to make us part of those who will witness first Ramadan towards the end of Ramadan and so many other years, inshallah, as Muslims. I want to thank all of you and continue to and ask you to continue to pray for peace and stability in our great country. Once more, wish you happy Ramadan and may it be the Ramadan 1443 that will lead to our entry direct into Al Jannah Firdaus without his sap. Once more, we thank you, Ramadan Kareem. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That signals the commencement of the Ramadan fast and wishing all Muslim faithful a peaceful and prosperous Ramadan. The African road builders have, in their last edition of their conference in Cairo, Egypt, pronounced President Mahamudu Buhari as the winner of the 2021 Super Prize Great Builder Trophy Babakar Ndai Award. The formal presentation of the award took place in Abuja. Abdullahi Mohammed chronicles the road to the selection of the presidents. Taking the cameras to the skies could only get a bit closer to the sentence used by the African Road Builders Award Committee in describing their reasons for selecting President Muhammad Buhari as the winner of the year 2021 Babakar Ndai Trophy. <laughs> Unprecedented infrastructure development, they say. But most importantly for the committee is that highways and bridges built in the last seven years in Nigeria are shoulders, elbows and knees to the 56.6 thousand kilometers trans-African highways. Unlocking series of sources of funding with the presidential order seven top in the books makes the difference in building one of Africa's biggest road infrastructure. And after pronouncing President Muhammad Bahari as the winner of the 2021 Babakar Ndaya Trophy, it's time for the formal presentation. Mr. Watson. Our work in Nigeria does not end with this award. Mr. President not only led by example in this regard, but also inspired leaders of some nationals across Nigeria. The seventh edition of the African Road Builders Conference also took place in Nigeria, where Tanzania president was declared winner of the year 2022 Babakar Ndiaye Trophy. Babakar Ndiaye Trophy 2022. Her strides and the reform of the Tanzania Railways was key in her selection. In Abuja, Abdullahi Mohammed, NT News. Now let's bring you up to speed with other news making the rounds. The appeal court sitting in Enugu has affirmed the judgment of Ebony State High Court Abakeleke, which dismissed a suit filed by Senator Sonny Ogoji challenging the defection of Governor David Umwahi and his deputy Dr. Kelechi Igwe from People's Democratic Party, PDP, to the All Progressives Congress APC for lacking in merit. Chika Okori reports. Put five by Senator Sonny Obuoji and his running mate, Mr. Justin Ugodo, as the 2019 APC gubernatorial candidates in Eboin State, sought the High Court sitting in Abakaliki to sack Governor David Dumahe and his deputy on account of defection and install them. When the case was dismissed for lack of merit, the ruling of Abakaliki High Court that the defection of Governor Omahi and his deputy from the People's Democratic Party PDP to the All Progressives Congress APC neither breached any provision of the constitution nor the electoral arts. The constitution of Nigeria, it is mere rascality. To us, we we'll get a copy of it and study it carefully and meet with our client and know the next step to take. Meanwhile, a boy state... So congratulations to all of you. In Abakaliki, Chika Okori, NTA News. 
In a quest to phase out traditional pain and paper filling of court processes and embracing ICT, the Federal Capital Territory High Court has inaugurated Electronic Affidavit Registration Management System, AMS. This new automation will enable the court to provide improved service delivery to citizens and promote speedy dispensation of justice. The affidavit is accessible. It is now possible to apply for an affidavit from anywhere in the world and receive timely response from our desk officers. And we've started something which will make a big difference to the country. And I only pray, sir, that you help us push it to make it happen. We have given a solution that is credible and also accessible at the same time to the three parties that are necessary involved uh, in the process of the affidavit. The electronic arms will also save time, resources and pinpoint affidavits that are fake. The Cybercrime Advisory Council is to embark on additional cybersecurity sensitization for stakeholders, launch cybersecurity toolkits from MSMEs and relevant agencies on cybersecurity resilience. The National Security Advisor, Major General Baba Gana Mongono, who presided over the ninth meeting of the Council, agreed to protect critical national information, especially telecommunications assets, and to strengthen efforts to sensitize state governments on emerging threats as part of measures to address emerging cyber threats heightened by the Russia-Ukraine crisis. It has increased its routine monitoring and activities and advisories to relevant stakeholders and held sectoral computer security incidents response teams to facilitate incident management coordination, enhance reporting and strengthen information sharing mechanism. The Director General Nigerian Television Authority, Malam Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, says engaging media practitioners in addressing security challenges in the country will help in providing accurate information, halt fake news and motivate security agencies in the discharge of their mandate. The Director General said this in a lecture at Armed Forces Command and Staff College, Jaji Kaduna. Suleiman Rigachuku reports. As complex and dynamic the challenge of terrorism, banditry and agitation, the approach to surmount this requires multifaceted approach involving critical stakeholders. One of the platforms for stakeholders' engagement, bringing together security services and the media for truthful and objective discussion on variant national security issues, is exercise has KBU of the Armed Forces Command and Staff College Jaji. Our interactions with the media is increasing. Presenting a paper to participants on the topic, addressing security imperatives in Nigeria, the role of the media, represented by the Zonal Director NTA Kaduna Network Center, Hamza Musa Makaripi. Director General Nigerian Television Authority, Malem Yakub Ibn Muhammad said, no matter the circumstances, Nigerian media must be patriotic, objective, and unifying. No matter the odds, no matter the difficulties we see in this country, no matter the challenges, the Nigerian Television Authority stands as a unifier. We want to bring unity to Nigerian people. The Director General emphasized the need for mutual respect, timely alertness on security breach between security agencies and the media for proper information dissemination to the public. Selema Rigachkun, NTA News. The flag officer commanding Eastern Naval Command Rear Admiral Ibrahim Dewu on a familiarization tour to Aqua Ibom State says the Nigerian Navy is reassuring legitimate business owners of adequate security around the nation's coastal lines. Kelvin Samuel tells us more. Briefing news main after the so round naval facilities in Aquaibom State, Flag Officer Commanding Eastern Naval Command, Rear Admiral Ibrahim Dewu, says his meeting with critical stakeholders in the state is to discuss ways to ensure adequate security across Eastern Naval Command. All their challenges will surely be addressed, and we are ready, we will give them the needed support to carry out all these operations. Criminals that are in the business of illegal oil bunkering and cool air theft. We are prepared, we are going to up our game, and we will go after them. 
Some of the places visited by the FOC include NNS Jubilee, the Baka Forward Operating Base, and the Aluminium Smelter Company of Nigeria, ASCON, which is gearing up to commence production again after being shot since 2014. From NNS Jubilee, Kotaba's local government area of Akwaibom State, Kevin Samuel, NTA News. President Mahmoud Buhari has approved the appointment of Dr. Yusuf Mena Bukar as the Director General of National Agency for the Great Green Wall under the Federal Ministry of Environment. Dr. Yusuf holds a doctorate degree in Emerging Climate Change Risk on Sustainable Urban Growth from the University of Liverpool with expertise in climate change adaptation and sustainable development. Dr. Yusuf is a member of the Nigerian Environmental Society. A statement issued by the Director Press Federal Ministry of Environment, Sagir El Mohammed, indicates that the appointment is for a four-year term and takes effect from 4th April 2022. Michael is standing by in Lagos with more reports. Hello, Michael. Hello, Jumai. Towing of vehicles will commence along the Lekki Koyi Link Bridge on the 15th of April as the newly installed equipment are put to test run. Managing Director Lekki Concession Company Limited, Yemi Yomi Omomwason, said robust discussion is still ongoing with stakeholders on the need to resume operations. Abola Di Salami has a situation report. As early as 7 a.m., the Lekki Ikoyi Link Bridge Corridor was surrounded by the presence of heavy security personnel to forestall any attempt to cause civil unrest by any person or group of persons under the guise of protest. As vehicles exiting Ikoyi through the bridge into Lekki added seamless, same applied to those making their way from end of Bodilon to Lekki Phase 1. The Lekki Koiling Bridge, after 18 months of being out of commercial operation as a result of the NSAS protest that led to the destruction of some of their properties. Today, the bridge has begun test running of their newly installed equipment. This, the company said, will go for two weeks. We are now seeing vehicular passages. We will know what our system is actually saying, whether it is as efficient as we have uh, seen it on the paper, on the non-life data. That is what we mean by testing. It also means that within this period of 15 days, we are not going to collect money from any motorist to make a passage on the bridge. Reacting to news, making the round on the disposition of some residents to the commencement of tolling of vehicles around the access, the managing director said, Several mutual discussions have been reached, while for the engagement with stakeholders is still ongoing. The period will enable us to engage further so that we can arrive at a situation that will be beneficial, mutually beneficial to everybody. However, before the expiration of the two weeks window set, motorists will apply the toll gates to update their electronic cards as payment of cash is not allowed. In Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTA News. As part of its strategic intervention towards tackling security challenges, the Nigerian Army is infusing skills in use. The initiative supervised by the Nigerian Armed Forces Resettlement Center, NAFRIC, in Lagos, is focusing on empowering youth to check restiveness, which could be a major threat to security. Olumide Guntala reports. Saying an idle hand is the devil's workshop propelled the Nigerian army to adopt the skill acquisition scheme for Nigerian youth, interested members of the public, groups, and ex service personnel as part of means of tackling insecurity. This is the motive behind these 135 selected civilians that graduated from the Nigerian Armed Forces Resettlement Center, NAFRIC Skill Acquisition Training. The commandant, the Nigerian Armed Forces Resettlement Center. Air Vice Marshal Idi Gamsulubu, who was represented, reassured Nigerians that the Nigerian Army will continue to give opportunities to youth. Nigeria Armed Forces Resettlement Center will continue to employ ambitions to enhance the process of teaching and learning at the center to produce better citizens for the development 
Chairman as Committee on Defense, Baba Jimmy Benson, applauded the Nigerian Army for this initiative, which no doubt will help in reducing crime rate and other social vices, especially among the youth. So the more we empower youth, the more the insecurity index will go down. I felt during the strike, I feel like I could make use of the opportunity. And when this opportunity came, I felt, OK, let me, let me take it. This is a privilege and an opportunity for me. The center's vision remains to be a world-class training institution capable of repositioning not only ex-servicemen but retirees of other paramilitary, security agencies and other organizations to cope with the challenges of post-service life. In Lagos, Olumide Kutola, Mente News. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on YouTube at NTA News Online. You can also visit our Facebook page at NTA Network News, Twitter handle at NTA News Now, and on Instagram at NTA Network for updates. Time for soon messages. The news continues shortly. Please stay. <laughs> Find the strength I need every time that I look into your eyes. You show me, you show me. I know they worry, cause I know that you did by my side. You show me, when the night comes, you hold me in your arms and you stay. I'll never let you go, my feet, baby. No matter what I do, you love me unconditionally. So I put me every day, no matter what I show you. You show me love. You show me, you show me, you show me. Every moment to the world, you're the tired just to take care of me. You show me, you show me. Even when I'm at my worst, you see that you see the best in me. Whenever I go, you know they value you all the time. Always there to hold me closer. You never let me down. Rejections. That taught me to keep striving. Thank you for the long hours. That taught me discipline. Thank you for the knockdowns. That taught me to bounce back. And for the unexpected victories. That taught me to never give up. Thank you for making me who I am. Thanks for joining us. 
Lami Adamu has emerged president of the National Council for Women's Society in the just concluded national delegate of the council. Speaking on the outcome of the elections, the Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Tallinn, expressed confidence in the new executive to take NCWS to the next level. Ungozi Technical reports. The National Council for Women's Society is an umbrella body of civil society organizations in Nigeria responsible for championing the cause of women inclusiveness in decision making. Lami Adamu, who hails from Taraba State, clinched the position of president with a wealth of experience having served in the system for over 35 years. I promise myself that if I'm given this opportunity by Nigerian women, I want to mobilize our women from the grassroots so that we work. I expect the present administration to maintain that regular rehabilitation of the building should continue. Extolling the peaceful conduct of the election and decorum by the delegates, the Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Tallinn, urged the new president and her executives to work with the ministry in mobilizing Nigerian women at the grassroots to be more involved in political activities. Empowerment of women, making women to be relevant in every sphere. Decision-making, political empowerment. Seven positions were contested, while others returned unopposed to run for a four-year term. Ngozi Technical, NTA News. The Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development have presented nutritional guidelines that would be standardized for the National Homegrown School Feeding Program. This was during a one-day validation meeting with development partners held in Abuja. Ruth Awele reports. Children, they say, are future leaders of tomorrow. And as part of efforts in shaping the future of the Nigerian child, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development has continued to rejig the National Homegrown School Feeding Program. These validation exercise with development partners is to assess the designed nutritional guidelines that would be adopted across the country to improve its standard. This is one of the largest, if not the largest, school feeding program in Africa. Despite all the gaps, all the challenges, this is one of the programs that development partners are genuinely happy about. Health of the child has increased as well and has also assisted farmers in extending their farming to the extent of meeting the demand of the National Homegrown School Feeding Program not just local content, it's totally local, on how do we do things, how do we train our cooks, how do we feed our children, what kind of foods can make up the menus of our local food materials. We worked very hard for nearly two years to develop this uh, uh, um, standard institutionalized document and we are here to validate it. With the validation exercise completed, it is hoped that the nutritional guidelines will be duly adhered to and the standard guidelines of the school feeding program will serve as reference point for other African countries to adopt. In Abuja, Ruth Aguela, NT News. Benin is next and Agatha is our guide. Jumai for joining us in Benin. Now, women in Edo State have been exposed to ways of breaking gender bias, limiting them in all strata of national development. It was at an outreach by Women Wing of the Nigerian Labour Congress NLC in the state. Ivio Yahiri reports. The perfect picture of a gender equal society is what women are envisaging. Now that the global call for gender equality has been heightened, the Women Committee of the Nigeria Labour Congress has seen the need to bring together all women to see ways of ensuring that they are relevant in today's world regardless. The positions are strictly reserved for the men. This assertion is not right. Women pay for deals with their men counterparts. Women can be presidents, state chairmen, branch chairman. To ensure that their plans and strategies come to fruition, they brought speakers to challenge the minds of the women to ensure they come out of their shells and support each other. Don't be scared to 
to approach us, the men, whenever you have aspiration to run for anything, for us to always give you the support. We are tired of the women who talk to those that the violence we are breaking, and we must break out from that cuckoo, from that cage where we kept ourselves. The parents' body of the union in Edo State, led by the representative of the acting chairman, Ojion Olaye, is totally in support of the women and their vision of breaking the bias. In Benin, Ivie Uyahiri, NTA News. Talking politics now as plans to conduct election into local government councils in Edo State gather momentum. Parties involved in the exercise are taking steps to ensure success at the polls. Jude Abugu was at the Secretariat of some political parties and Office of the Edo State Independent Electoral Commission, ETSIEC, and our reports on their level of preparedness. The April 19 local government election is going to be the Edo State Independent Electoral Commission's major exercise after 2018 local government election, and a lot has changed since then. This is why the commission, according to its chairman, is working with the Independent National Electoral Commission, security agencies, and leaders of political parties to ensure successful conduct of the election. We are making every preparation to hold a free, fair, and credible election. As vendors for supplies of electoral materials, both sensitive and non sensitive materials. For the political parties, it is an exercise they have all been looking forward to, and major political parties, the APC and the PDP, are stepping up their games. We are formidable, we are on ground, and I will have all our first 11 into all the positions at the various local government. And we are now ready to feed the best 11. We are trying to see how quickly we can follow up this timetable. We say some forms should commence tomorrow. I just issued a circular saying, uh, says of forms we can, will start tomorrow. The April 19 local government election will fill the 192 councillorship positions and determine those that will take charge of the 18 local government areas of the state, which have been vacant since March 2021. In Benin, Jude Abugu, NTA News. That's our package. Jumai has more on Network News. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise, remember the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being above board, by being civil, patriotic and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency. You're welcome back. President Mahmoud Buhari joins world leaders in welcoming the month of Ramadan, the month of fasting and intense devotion for Muslims. In a message to Nigerians and Muslims all over the world, the president said the period offers a unique opportunity to feel the hunger experienced by the poor so as to feel what it's like to be deprived and marginalized. Muslims, the president emphasized, should seek greater personal discipline, which is necessary for the realization of a great nation. He called a Muslim elite against food waste and extravagant spending, while others face hunger and destitution, urging that they should care for their neighbors, the poor and the marginalized. He also called for prayers for peace in the country and beyond, and for healing and harmony throughout the world. President Buhari wishes all Muslims a successful complete of the 30-day fasting period. Next is Sports Update with Cynthia Ogo. 
Ghana and Uruguay will meet again at the FIFA World Cup after the now infamous quarterfinal encounter in 2010 when the Black Stars lost via penalties to the South Americans. Following the draw for the 2022 World Cup, which peached both sides in Group H with Portugal and Korea, defending champions France are in Group G alongside Switzerland, Serbia and Cameroon. The FIFA World Cup holds in the Arab world for the first time from November 21 to December 18 this year. With the international break finally over, Premier League action resumes with a liverpool Watford clash in Anfield Saturday. Brighton and Oval Bionville endeavour to end a six-game losing run when Norwich City visit Amex Stadium. Manchester City target an away win at relegation-threatened Burnley, while Brentford visits Chelsea for a West London derby at Stamford Bridge, which comes up live on the NTA 2.30pm. In the meantime, Kefa Zawaya has emerged overall best of the 2022 NMA President Cup Golf Tournament at IBB International Golf and Country Club, Abuja. And the message of this NMA Golf uh, Presidents Golf Tournament is pick a sport and exercise. We will continue to dedicate and commit ourselves to the service, to the health service of Nigerians now more than ever before. Doctors are exercising now. We are hammering out. The doctors have to be well first before they can. You, do, you can't offer what you don't have. The tournament, which is organized in honor of the Nigeria Medical Association president, Innocent Ucha, organizers say, is to further emphasize the need for medical practitioners to take part in regular kit fit exercises. With sports update, Cynthia Ogun, NCLUs. That's it on Network News tonight, and this is wishing our Muslim faithful a peaceful Ramadan. Before we go, don't join, don't forget to join NT in the fight against rape and rapists, and be a star. Thanks for watching. I am Jumai Yusuf. <laughs>